All right, so you're looking at a Toyota Solara SLE model. This is a convertible model. It's a pretty nice one. So, they brought it and they want me to install this line and a brand new rack and pinion. They brought some power steering fluid there too. And I am struggling with it. Let me tell you why. I had to take the whole suspension apart, right? You see all the suspension. And I had to brace the engine. I made this brace out of some wood, a four by four piece of wood, like a fence post. And I took a tire off of a car and cut it, an old tire. And screwed it in to give it some traction and also to help protect the fender paint there as it sits on the fender there and then I have a chain set up grabbing this bolt here and I had to put a longer bolt and the other one I don't think I'll be able to show you it's kind of I'll do my best to show you if you can see it. You got sensors in the way. It's bolted in down there on that bracket. And I had to get a longer bolt. And then I brought the chain up under the throttle body. Up under the throttle body. And over the piece of wood. So this intake has a bracket that goes like a metal bracket. You'll feel for it. And it goes down there where that chain is connected to where I just showed you. It's kind of tight quarters to really get in there. But if you feel for it, use the brain God gave you. You'll feel it's like a S-shaped metal bracket. It goes to that bolt on the head. That's a safe place to grab it. I didn't want to attach the chain with this much weight on it onto the intake those bolts are much weaker um so yeah we got this chained up over here oh excuse me for yawning on y'all we're looking at the 2007 toyota solara there and obviously we have it chained on the other side as well on the other side i'll show you where i loop the chain if the camera allows me to underneath the aluminum bracket to this motor mount. On this side, under the motor mount bracket, up and over, and I got a bolt holding it there. I couldn't come any closer here because you have your strut bar I have the same piece of rubber under here protecting. And that holds the engine. It braces the engine up. So it's grabbing it from that motor mount, from the cylinder head on the front and the cylinder head on the back on that chain. And that piece of wood is obviously braced from this fender to that fender. And that is hoisting the engine up. Now there was a little bit of sag on that side because heavier the transmission is attached on that side in order to do this you don't have to remove the battery completely i just disconnected the negative cable for safety reasons but you do have to remove the air intake tube the air intake box everything else you do have to plan on having some longer bolts because the bolts that go in on this side are definitely not long enough to go through the chain and have enough thread to thread in. All right, so from the top, this engine it looks pretty good and I'm pretty much done showing you guys from the top. Uh, I will reiterate before I lay down under here, I wanna give you a view on both sides. You're going to have your sway bar link 
here that attaches to the top of the strut. If you look inside here, you have an Allen key and then you have the nut. So this whole thing will try to spin when you try to crack the nut loose. Go ahead and put your 17 mil impact on this and hit it. It'll crack it loose, but it won't take it out. Then you have to take the impact off and get a regular open-handed wrench and put the Allen key inside of there, holding it with the Allen key as you're wrenching with an open hand wrench to get it the rest of the way off. At least this car was from up north. It's very rusty. All the bolts were rusty and fought me. This bolt should be in the top bolt, not in the bottom one. And this bottom one should be where this one is. Oh boy, I can't stop yawning on y'all. It's late over here, so just work with me. All right. These are the motor mount bolts on the bottom. There's three, one, two, and the third one's back there. You can't see it from the front, but it's on the back side. I was going to remove that bolt and that bolt and take the whole control arm out. Um, I did remove the CV axle. I did have this completely swung out, but I have that bolt going through the top bolt to give it more room to drop down lower so that the subframe, this is the subframe, y'all, subframe. To have this whole subframe drop down lower, you can see it right there, how it is. Let's see if I can get my hand in here. This, you can see where that was pressed up against this and it's lowered down there. So this whole subframe, lower cradle, whatever you wanna call it, was lowered and that's why you see the motor mount separated. And um, CV axle and everything. I was gonna go ahead and lower the control arm. This lower control arm is pretty shot. It needs to be replaced. If you look here, look at this bushing. That bushing is tore up. Same on both sides. So it's time for new lower control arms on it. Struts are also original, never been replaced. Sway bars are rusty, crusty. Uh, CV axles are holding up good. We're gonna put a rack and pinion. I'm hoping it came with outer tie rods, but I'm thinking it probably didn't. If it didn't, I'm gonna ask him to get some new ones. Um, this is the sway bar. That I have out of the way there. And right now I'm working on this line was bolted from here to this bolt. And then it had another bolt that went from there to there. So I have movement in that line, see? But I need to get that bolt out, which the, that's the nut on the front side. And this is the bolt that goes through this way. So that's the bolt head. And then over here is the nut coming in over here where I have the impact and the socket. I'm gonna show you on the other side before I lay down and then I'll end the video laying down under there. We did the same thing over here. Show you real quick how that lower ball joint on that control arm that bushing on the control arm, not the lower ball joint, it's the control arm bushing is shot out. And this is your lower ball joint that I just referred to down there. That seems to be okay. To remove this control arm is not fun because to get to that bolt under there, this bracket's in the way. And to get that bracket out of the way, <laughs> You're removing this whole entire motor mount completely. Like right now, I just have it cracked loose. But yeah, you would have to jack this up higher. The engine and the transmission get the motor mount 
top bolt out, get the whole entire motor mount removed. And um, then you would, with the motor mount completely removed, you would have access to that nut to replace this control arm. So it's not a fun control arm to replace. Here is the nut that I'm talking about over there that you have the gold socket hooked up to. That's the nut on this side that holds the rack and pinion. And that's the bolt head on the back side going all the way through. And there's a wrench I have on the pressure line coming in. A few other transmission lines. If you can notice in this video, for those of you that have caught on already, I have the sway bar completely disconnected. I have it disconnected from the sway bar link over here, like I said. Sway bar link is still attached to the end of the sway bar. But the sway bar bushing back here has been unbolted. But because of the bend in it, I still don't have enough room to remove it. To remove this sway bar, I would have to drop the subframe a lot lower, pretty much all the way, and slide it out through the back. I'm trying to just work around it is what I'm trying to do. But you see the space in between the transmission and that nut on the end of the bolt that's coming in from the back this way? That's what I have to release to get the rack and pinion out. And then I planned to get the rack and pinion out this way. Play with the sway bar, get it out of the way, and fish it out through here without having to lower the subframe all the way. Now, what I highly recommend you do is what I did. I marked this with uh, whiteout. And the reason why is because this is the steering yoke. Move this plug out of the way so you guys can see a little better. So there's your steering yoke going to the steering wheel, right? That's the steering column, the bottom of it, coming out of the steering wheel. And this is your steering yoke with the yoke U-joint built into it. This is the nut, and the nut, the bolt that goes through that's already been loosened. And what I did is mark it all the way down. So when I put this in, I make absolutely sure that I put it in the same exact position. And that way I know my steering wheel was centered when I marked that. My steering wheel inside of the car was centered. And the rack and pinion, the wheels were centered. Also, obviously, if the steering wheel was centered. So that'll give me a guide. Another thing I did was, um, Let's see if this, this iPhone quality on this camera kind of sucks. Let's see. The focusing of it doesn't autofocus well. All right, so I put some uh, white out on this too because when I crack this nut loose and back this tie rod off, I want to be able to have an idea of the similar thread count to where it was before when I reinstall it. So another thing guys do is they count the threads and you would use your nail, feel the first thread it falls into and that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and 10. So it's about 10 threads but it's marked either way and that is kind of the best you can do to kind of keep the alignment as close as to what it was it obviously is going to go get a real alignment but you know you don't want to be driving super off on the way to the alignment shop all right enough talking under here up there i mean it's time to go under here and as i come under here i'm going to show you a few other talking points here this was rusty crusty, let me say. This is after me spraying some penetration PB blast penetration fluid on it. That was rusty. Everything was rusty crusty under here. I mean, everything. You can see how rusted 
like I feel sorry for the guy that <laughs> has to work on this radiator because everything is rusted. This car was clearly from up north. Um, if you look in the bolts that I've removed, you can see the rust build up in there and around there and all the bolts came out rough. All the bolts came out rough. They were all like these. Let me show you this on the downpipe. You see that rust? This bolt is like, look at me, but don't touch me. So if I were to drop this subframe, I've put penetration fluid on those nuts on the bottom of these studs. There's nuts, see the nuts? So I'd have to crack those loose. I would have to disconnect the O2 sensors. You have both that one and that one. And those are your downstream. And then you have two upstream up top um, that are also attached to it that you want to disconnect also. So I'll disconnect all four O2 sensors. I'll unbolt it from there. I'll unbolt it from here. And then I got to unbolt it from here. And really, no. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I would unbolt it from here, too. And then you would have to follow this down. And you see how over here it goes under this subframe. And the rack and pinion is up over it, over here. See the yoke and the, and the rack and pinion? So you follow the exhaust, and there is your third catalytic converter and that's the resonator silencer canister and then down towards the back you have your muffler all the way down yonder at the bottom but our big problem is these rusty crusty bolts man those bolts ain't gonna come off I sprayed them with all kind of penetration fluid. It was dry and rusty like this, and I sprayed it all down. And uh, penetration fluid ain't cheap. And I've pretty much gone through about two cans. Let me show you what that is for most of you that don't know what it is. Blaster. Since 1957, penetrating fluid. Uh, this can's got a teeny bit left in the bottom of it. So I'm honestly trying to avoid having to remove that because that's going to have to be grinded off and it's gonna, it's not going to be something I want to do. So I'll just slide over here and show you some more rust. See, see the amount of rust this thing has everywhere on it. Like this rusty, crusty under here. So these are the, um, these right here are the lines, the high pressure lines going into the rack and pinion that I'm going to replace. And you have one here and the other one directly above it. If you can see the other one going above it, it's kind of hard to... It's kind of hard to show. I'll come in with this hand and touch it. So there's the top one. There's the bottom one. And they're rusty, crusty. And then over here, you have a release point where you could technically release it from here. So I have a wrench on here. And this wrench, I believe, is a 22 millimeter wrench on this side. And I believe I was using a was that a 19 or was that a, was that a 17? I want to say it was a 17. No, too small.
Okay, so there's the 17 on it. And then you would crack it loose. But you see how the whole line wants to bend with it? That's because it's just a line, right? So then you would want to hold this end the opposite way, that way, and pry this end that way away, right? The opposite way, and then that would crack that loose. But it's so rusted, and it's stripping out, honestly. And it's stripping out to the point where I have to stop because I have more muscle than what the bolt can handle. So you can't see it too well, but right here on where my nail is touching, get away mosquito, right here where my nail is touching is where it's stripped on this backside. And that's where I'm trying to grab it, but this is all crusted up. So the other alternative is to go back to attempt to remove it from up here but then there's all kind of things in the way and very little room so if i'm gonna attempt to remove it from there which i have to remove it from there either way but i have to get this um rack and pinion out first i got the sway bar out of the way as much as i can um i remove the 10 millimeter bolt here to kind of give this a little more room but um yeah, I'm pretty much stuck at this point because of all the things I've mentioned. Uh, two of the last things to mention is I'll show you from a different angle. If this mosquito buzzing around my ear will let me. Um, from a different angle, I'll show you here. Okay, sorry, a mosquito was like in my eardrum. I could hear it buzzing. Anyways, this nut hits against here. So you see, it's a 17. And when you try to get in there with the wobbler and a short 17, the transmission's in the way. And you can't, you can't get in on the bolt, on the nut good. You're gonna end up stripping it. So, I decided to go with an alternative wrench and a shorter socket. And I thought I was getting somewhere because that length from there to there was enough to fit in here. And then what I did is I put this pipe inside of this wrench for more leverage. And I put this socket on there. And I had all that leverage. Extra leverage from the pipe. And the socket. And the nut. I mean the, the socket and the ratchet. Had enough room to get in between the nut. And the transmission. And I was prying this way. With the wrench coming this way. And the pipe coming down. And it snapped my tool this it just broke right off so that's supposed to be like that this is a half an inch ratchet and that's a 3 8 I used the 3 8 because it was longer had more leverage now I'm forced to step up to the half inch and go with the shorter socket. That's a 19. You gotta get this 17 off one-handed and I can't. So, hold on a second. show you what I'm dealing with when I try to switch over to the short socket 
half inch on a half inch ratchet can't fit in there either it hits on the transmission the transmission won't let me get in so now i broke my tool and i have to go buy a new one it's time out of my day to go to the tool store and buy another ratchet but as if I don't have enough to do already. This, this is what happens with these rusty, crusty ones, man, that fight you. Every single nut and bolt was rusted. Every single nut and bolt on this car is just the oxidation on it. You can see it everywhere. It's just everything's rusty, crusty. All right, so enough of making fun of how rusty this is. Let's move, keep the video moving. So you see this? I'll show you if I can. So that's not coming off. We have the gun on number three. This is the the big boy Milwaukee with the big battery on it. This is heavy duty, half an inch impact. I have to put at least a short extension on it. I got an impact strength uh, wobbler on the uh, socket, which is a 17 socket, deep socket. And that's the nut over here on this side. Now this side, I can probably switch to the deep socket over here, which is what I'm going to have to do. Because even that big impact gun ain't got enough juice in it to crack that bad boy loose. So I'm going to have to switch the socket over here. You want to make sure you're on there good and you got some good leverage. And then you want to make sure that you're in a good position to put some muscle on the damn thing and try to crack it loose. So that one cracked loose. I think I'm free spinning on the back side on the bolt head on the back side. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get a wrench in. Feel my way back here. Must be bigger than 17. Yep, it's a 19 on the back. The bolt head is a 19. The nut is a 17.
that's out. So this bolt and this nut for the rack and pinion is out. I'm gonna set that to the side, grab the camera back over here, show you guys that it's out. So there's that bolt for the rack and pinion that's out. I've noticed something else while I'm laying under here that I could show you guys. I know the bolt's kind of rusty, but you see that bolt right there? Right there, that's that bracket I was telling you about. <laughs> you can see the bolt that I put in right there with the chain grabbing onto the head. You feel for that from the top. That bolt right there on that chain is what's hoisting that engine on this side and holding the weight of this transmission on that piece of wood. So now you don't want PV blast dripping in your eyes. You want to move around. That's the bad thing with spraying this thing down. You end up with PV blast dripping in your eyeballs. All right, so we are back to figuring out how to get this bowl off so we already know we can't fit a socket we gotta hit it with a wrench right so if i put the wrench on it right here you can see the exhaust is kind of a buzz kill killing my swag right there to get to it so i would want to um, remove this exhaust in a perfect world I would have zzz, zzz, hit them bolts zzz, zzz, hit them bolts zzz, zzz, hit them bolts right there this is the Y pipe it's a Y pipe see so I would have removed this Y pipe and then I would have came here and I would have went zzz, zzz, remove that hanger right there which them two little 12 millimeter bolts and then I would have came down here and did zzz, zzz, and removed this catalytic converter and this would have all been out of the way and then I could have really dropped the subframe much lower and that would have gave me the access to be able to get a real socket and a wrench on this side of this nut without the interference of the transmission. The reason why I haven't dropped that is because of how rusty mainly these bolts back here are. They're very, very rusty and I know I have to grind those off. They're just gonna end up snapping. I have to grind them off, drill them out. It's not just, oh, grind them out. What's the big deal, Danny? You not only have to grind them out, you grind the, the the nut off and then you got to drill out because it's a stud and then you drill that out and make it a clear hole going through both sides and then you got to find bolt holes that are grade A bolts that will hold the heat of this catalytic converter without melting so you get some uh, set of grade A bolts and grade A nuts to go with it and washers and then you would put new bolts and washers through it but you gotta cut grind drill it's not fun really trying to avoid that but i don't think i have i'm running out of options because i mean i have everything loose i have all the motor mounts remember i was showing you the motor mounts the nuts are already out here here one two three this is the this and this 
are the bolts coming through from the top for that control arm but I explained to you the bracket that's in the way and all that um, I wouldn't have to remove the CV axles I don't want to I'll lose transmission fluid I already have that yoke removed and um, once I get this bolt removed then technically you would think that the rack and pinion could slide out through there but the reason why it can't I'm going to explain to you why. Number one, over here we have this exhaust manifold in the way that's super close. And um, we still have the. I don't know if you can see it from here. We still have those two lines right here. See how rusty they are? Still have this line and this line that would need to detach before we can slide it out. Now, if I wanted to be an asshole, I would just cut them. Zzz, zzz, cut them and say, sorry, you need to buy new lines because technically you do. But I like this guy and I'm trying to save him as much money as I can and I don't want to be an asshole like that and just cut him if I can work my way around it. But right now, my biggest concern is getting this. If I can find a way to get this nut off, I'll deal with that afterwards. I need to get this nut off of that bolt. It's a 19 on the back and a 17 here. And here's where I need it, right? But I need to also interlock this wrench on there. And I don't, I can't do it holding the phone, so just bear with me for a second. So I could show you, don't go nowhere. I got you sitting on my chest. I know you could hear me while I'm trying to interlock this wrench on here. All right. Thanks for bearing with me. Here we go. So you see how I have this wrench coming in here? And there it goes, it came off. That's interlocked there. And then that goes here. And you always suck when you're holding the camera. Normally I can get that on much smoother. So that'll interlock there. This presses against the back of that and this holds that. And I can't do anything with one hand. I'm all falling apart here trying to show you all this. Come on. But I can't interlock that with the exhaust in the way see it won't let me and i need it to interlock with that nut grabbing in that position right there but this exhaust won't let me inner get in to interlock i've already tried several times and it won't let me so in order for that to interlock i need to take it to the next interlock position not that one that one right there so if i go to that next one you would say yeah danny you can interlock it now and get leverage and if you weren't on the phone and you were using both hands <laughs> oh man this is so frustrating hold on one more time hold on all right so not in that position and that one and this one all right so now I'm going to try to hold the phone with this hand. Okay. And now I got my fingers over the camera. Not smart. All right. So with this wrench interlocked there and on there, you would say, crack it loose. Put your muscles into it. You got it, right? No big deal. Well, look at this. You see how the wrench is up against the subframe right there? So the wrench is hitting the subframe, not allowing me to pull down on it without it popping off of the nut. And that's because of the position that I'm getting on the nut. I'm getting on the nut in this position instead of in this position. 
In this position, I got enough room to put my finger in between the subframe and the wrench. That'll give me enough of room to crack it loose. Once I crack it and break the force of the nut on that bolt, I get that crack. I'm good to go, but I can't get that crack with this amount of leverage from just the length of this wrench. I need to add the leverage, the length of this wrench. And this exhaust is in the way, in the position that I need to grab the nut to have the room in between the wrench and the subframe. So there goes that idea, right? So we're back to square one. And like we said, we need to crack this loose and then that'll let us wiggle the rack and pinion around. And worst case scenario, if we had to, we can cut those lines. I'm gonna avoid doing that. I'm gonna try to get a wrench in there as complicated as it sounds. I'm gonna get a wrench in here and try to ksh, 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 small wrench. But I need to remove this first. I can't get the impact gun on it. So it's like, you're danged if you do, danged if you don't. Let's see if this camera will get up in here. Hold on, let me switch the phone around. Okay, so there is the back oh, head of the bolt on the back side, and you would say, Danny, here's another bright idea. Let's crack it loose from the backside, right? Yeah, you can get a wrench and a socket on that. Been there, tried that. First of all, it's always easier to break the, the nut loose than it is the bolt that's attached to the nut. Can you still break it loose from here? Yes, you could. And if I could move this sway bar enough out of the way, to get to it from the back with the impact gun, that's what I was gonna try to do next, to go from the backside and try to crack that loose that way, at least impact it enough with the impact gun to where I can crack it loose, just shock the bolt, the nut enough to where I can crack it loose. So that's the angle that I'm trying to go about it now, to go that angle from the backside. Here comes that mosquito again. And then last but not least, I have to either try to disconnect that or the two lines above, worst case scenario, I have to cut that line. I don't want to. If I do, he's gonna have to buy those lines. Um, it comes down to also not just him spending the money on buying the lines, but if they're not available, if they have to be ordered, X, Y, Z, all that stuff. Now this car is in my garage, tying up my garage, waiting for him to get me those parts. And I got other stuff going on. I got other cars I need to work on. I got other bills. This is something that needs to be done in and out. As quick as possible. Another alternative is I'm trying to crack it loose this way. Like so. Freaking mosquito just loves me and I got bug spray on and he doesn't care. He wants me anyways. So there is the nut. No, that's the bolt on the back side. So that's the bolt coming through that way. And then the nut is the 17 on this side. And to try to crack that loose, I got some leverage there. It's kind of hard to do it holding the phone. Now, oh, there we go. It moved a little bit. That moved. So that 
lets me know that I could probably get an impact gun on that and crack it loose. So I'm gonna come up here and look for a 19. I'm gonna get a 19 long. And I think this is it, even though it's not numbered. Yeah, it is numbered, you just can barely read it. 19 long. And we're gonna get a little longer extension just in case. And we're gonna go underneath again. Now, keep in mind, we still got that 17 wrench holding the nut on the back side over here. And just to, for those of you that get confused, this is the nut. And this is the bolt head. That's the, the bolt, bolt head. So you can see the part that was... Um, grabbing the force, the nut where it was had its mo most of its force applied, and the part that was sticking out. So, anyways, that's what you tr try to break free from from that white oxidation built up over time. That's why that was so hard that I was hitting it with the impact gun, the big Milwaukee, pa 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 on number three and everything, and it wasn't cracking it loose because of all that oxidation built up. So we're trying to get this bolt and this nut out. I have that nut held on by the 17 and I'm gonna approach it from the backside. Move that out of the way. And we're going to attach this 19 to that. And we're gonna try to come in from back here. And if you notice, I got the subframe already lowered. Like this is the subframe and it should be all the way up against here. Now I left enough thread to where it's still held on because once this subframe comes out, like completely out, boom, all the way down, it's hard to get it to line back up again. It's a big subframe. It goes all the way across, see, boom, boom, boom. And then you have your con lower control arms attached to it, right? And then if you follow it, it goes all the way to the front. And then it goes all the way across the front. All the way across the front motor mount. Attaches all the way up front comes back this way the uh, other control arm and back here so this is the unibody the chassis and this is the cradle the lower cradle subframe whatever different people call it different things your sway bar attaches to it there so i have it as low as i can get it without the bolts completely coming out So here we go. Well, that is just enough extension right there. Now the ideal thing is to fit the impact directly on here without the wobbler. Hopefully that can happen. I don't know if that can happen still on the phone with you guys. I'll try my best. But no promises, right? No promises. We'll see. And there goes the ear pod. And it won't. Yep, that's not gonna happen. So, now I know I need to add the wobbler. Impact, strength, half inch, wobbler. So give me the little drop angle that these brake lines are demanding I give it. 
Okay, so we're on there. I have my wrench here. So with my right hand, I'm holding that 17 wrench in the front. And with my left, I'm gonna hit this. And it looks like that was a success. There's the nut. Let's get the impact safely off. So this is what we ended up using, the long 19, half an inch extension wobbler on the impact gun from the backside. So now we have that bolt. completely out and look how rusted it was look at the rust on that yeah I don't know how well the the autofocus on this is so I'll make sure it focuses so yeah there goes that So now, keep in mind, this is all in the name of avoiding to take down the exhaust, right? Because if, if the exhaust wasn't so rusty, crusty, like the way it is, right? All rusted up. We would have just dropped it down and it wouldn't be in our way. But look at this thing, y'all. Now that I'm laying back here, I'll give you a closer look. You see those? Freaking nuts. This is the bolt head. This is the nut. There's a gasket that goes in between here. And this has been bolted. This is so, so rusted. The rust like ate through the bolt. Completely ate through it. It looks like someone at some point put a crown nut. A crown nut. You know, the kind that you would normally slide a cotter pin through. So they put a crown nut on an exhaust, which it shouldn't have a crown nut. And you see how that nut is different? That's a regular nut. That has a higher chance of coming off than that crown nut does. Too much crud there for that to even have a chance. So this is definitely grind, drill, cut, all that to come off. If I get that off and I can get this exhaust off over here, Again, look at this. Look how cruddy that is. So that would have to come off too. And then that obviously is gonna have a gasket. And then over here, it would need to come off and then that would have a gasket also as well. So he would need he would need the downpipe gaskets for the Y pipe. And there would be one, two, and three. So and this is all like rusty and fragile. So I really don't want to mess with this guy's exhaust. In a perfect world, I would just drop the subframe. So then I will end in saying, how do you drop the subframe? Well, to drop the subframe... I don't know why it got so dark all of a sudden. All right. There we go. To drop the subframe, you gotta take it off here, on the other side over there, right? You see the exhaust there. See how it runs back on both sides, under the exhaust and across. So to drop that subframe right there, you would wanna have two jacks and two people. And one jack over here and one jack over there lowering the, on the subframe. Cause it's heavy, trust me, that subframe has some weight to it. And bringing the subframe down is easy. Putting it back up and getting all the holes and the engine and everything to line up, that's a whole nother ballpark. That's why you charge a lot of money to do this job. A lot, not a little, a lot. 
But like I said, we like this guy. I didn't think, when I quoted this to him, I thought this was just a slide the rack and pinion out, slide the new one in, give it back to him. I didn't think it was a drop the subframe job on this. I would have quoted him way different, probably double what I'm charging him at the very least. But you gotta be a man of your word and stick to the price you gave if you already gave a price. You can see this inner rack and pinion boot where it was all tore up. And you see how this is all like limp, like a limp penis, can't, can't stay hard. <laughs> Excuse my language, but that's the best example I can come up with right now. This should stay stiff and hard. When you let it, when you let it go, it should not drop. This is your outer tie rod. That is your inner tie rod, and this is your dust boot that's all ripped up. So the sway bar, like I already told you a little bit ago, there's only one way it comes out. I think my lens is dirty from me touching. It. Give me a second. That might help it focus better. All right. So there we go. So it's probably a little clearer for y'all to see. See how ripped up that is? And that's from leaking. Now what happens is this is the dust boot and inside of that rack and pinion, if you remove this dust boot, if you were to remove it, which he's gonna need a new one anyways, so for, for the educational purposes, I just jerked it off. Here is your inner tie rod where it bolts to the um, rack and pinion. The threads are where my fingers are. And it has an indention here and on the other side where you would stick a wrench or a tie rod removal tool could slide in here also. And you would remove this. Now, inside of here, there's a seal. Now, they rebuild these rack and pinions. That's why they charge you a core to return the old one. Because they'll open these up, inspect them, clean them, put a new seal in it, put a new dust boot on it, and sell it to someone as a brand new rack and pinion for 300 bucks. Crazy, huh? But that's what they do. They and Back in the day, they used to sell you, the customer, a rack and pinion rebuild kit and it would come with a new seal it would come uh c-clip and everything for it and uh you would rebuild it yeah, other than that it's just a shaft it's a hydraulic system so you're compressing hydraulic fluid back and forth and uh you need to have a good seal so when that seal goes bad it leaks out like it was doing here you see and the fluid power steering is a high strength detergent and that fluid leaked in the bottom of this it sat in the bottom of this dust boot and leaked and leaked and leaked and that fluid ate right through the the plastic i want to say like rubbery plastic it's probably a mixture of both whatever the point is dust boot went out and then once it ripped through the dust boot the fluid wasn't staying in there and it was obviously leaking out and he was noticing that he's losing power steering fluid leaking it out his steering probably wasn't that good being that this is all limp so that's another reason he noticed hey maybe it's time to replace this i don't know how well you can see down on that shaft but down in there is the seal and the shaft will turn back and forth. So right now it's technically loose and there's no way I can try to finagle this and get it out holding the phone in one hand. I don't own a GoPro to strap onto my forehead or my chest and do it on camera, but pretty much I got the sway bar to where I can move it out of the way and try to move this. I'm gonna try to slide this rack and pinion out. I'm not dumb and I know what's holding it. What's holding it in from sliding out is the lines that are attached to it on this side. You can see them right there. 
There's one of the lines and the other one right underneath it. See how rusty they are? Oh, I'm dropping the phone. Look how rusty crusty those are. So I have to disconnect those lines. And then once I disconnect those lines, I'm gonna pull this nut out. I'm gonna pry this yoke away. And then I'm going to be able to pull it out, right? Was this dust boot ripped? No, this dust boot is not leaking on this side. It's leaking on the other side. But you see, I got the, got the rack and pinion unbolted from the subframe. And if I got it off of the yoke... I think I could tilt it this way and play with this sway bar to and slide it up and out through here. But for that to happen, for that to be a reality, I have to disconnect those two lines under there. And like you can see the room you have in here to get a wrench and twist it is not much. And they're pretty rusted out. So that's going to be the next thing I'm going to do off camera also because this video is long enough and it's just hard to do this one handed. So um, I'll show you one last time underneath and then I'm done yapping to y'all. There's the two lines that I'm talking about. It does have a disconnect line right here but it's too rusted and too shot out. I've tried to loosen that there. I'm gonna play with this. I'm gonna play with the disconnect line some more, play with the other one. Worst case scenario, push come to shove. I have to cut both of these lines. Push come to shove. And then he's gonna really have to spend some money on both of those lines, completely brand new. Now he has one of the lines in the back but not the other one. He has the low pressure line, not the high pressure line. The high pressure line is an expensive one. So we'll try to save him some money. I'll play with that, see if it cracks itself loose. Um, slide, so on yours, if it's not rusty, you'll crack that loose, crack this loose, pry the yoke off, take the bolt from that steering yoke off, poop, poop and slide it out and you wouldn't have to drop the whole subframe on yours ideally somebody didn't use a crown nut as an exhaust nut when they did your exhaust and it wouldn't be all rusted out so these might have to get grinded off push come the shove so that's where i'm at he would have to buy obviously the gaskets for all that and uh, I really don't want to do that either because I don't want to have to drop the whole entire subframe. I don't want to keep being redundant, <laughs> talking about the same thing over and over. But I wanted someone to be able to watch this video and have a good, clear understanding of what it takes to do a rack and pinion on a 2007 Toyota Salara, Salara convertible. If this was a four cylinder, way, way, way easier, y'all. Way easier on the four cylinder. So much more room. The V6, yes, you get the power and the acceleration of a V6, right? I like a V6, but I don't like a front wheel drive V6. I like a rear wheel drive V6. On these front wheel drives, I always pick a four cylinder if I'm gonna go front wheel drive. You get so much more real estate. You get so much more real estate room available to make it easier to work on the engine. The a V6 front wheel drive, instead of being mounted this way, the pulleys and everything would be up here in the front. The transmission would be going towards the back wheels. Not this way, but that way. So it, it gives you a lot more room to work with. 
on a rear wheel drive and um, a rear wheel drive would normally have the rack and pinion in front not in the back so it makes it easier too these Solaras would have been beautiful if they would have made them rear wheel drive like they did the Lexus uh, SC 300s they had a straight six rear wheel drive they could have done this with the V6 rear wheel drive on these Solaras they would have been great cars in my opinion much better than the way they designed them with the front wheel drive setup, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. It makes the timing belt and everything a pain in the butt to get to. Anyways, hoist your engine, guys. Hoist your engine up. Oh, tired. And um, drop your subframe down on the bottom. The rack and pinion will be nice and easy. Even if you're doing this on jack stands, you will have access Get a buddy over, get one or two jacks. You gotta have at least two jacks and and jack it up one side and the other side, you know, get a block of wood, get it nice and level on the jack on both sides of the subframe and bring it up and do it that route. I have a transmission jack that I don't wanna use right now because I have a transmission on it right now but the transmission jack would be real good to help get the subframe up too because it has a wider a wider contact patch to grab that subframe and help bring it up so yeah that's that's where we're at um subframe down easy exhaust down first then the subframe down easy peasy rack and pinion rusty car trying to fish everything out because you don't want to drop the subframe because the exhaust is so rusty not so easy uh snapping ratchets breaking tools i mean i don't know why i get the hard ones but it is what it is i got stuck with the hard one i'm trying to get it finished in between tonight and tomorrow that's a lot to chew off but when this camera goes off i go boom 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 and i get to work um it's hard for me to do like good work on camera when i'm using one hand to hold the phone but i hope the video shed some light on the situation for someone looking to do a toyota solara rack and pinion with a v6 hopefully not a rusty one and um kind of gives you an, an idea on is this something i want to tackle myself or is this something i want to pay someone else um labor for this job dropping the subframe and everything i mean it just depends who's doing it and where they live and different different strokes for different folks but i mean a shop would charge a lot of money it'd be well over a thousand dollars um to do the rack and pinion on this car with an alignment labor everything well well over a thousand somewhere in between a thousand and two thousand depending where you take it um anyways this guy's good to me. I'm going to be good to him. I kind of shot myself in the foot on what I quoted him. I'm going to make no money on this thing. And it's going to kick my ass. But at the end of the day, it's going to get done. It's going to get done right. And that's really all that matters. Do it right or don't do it at all, right? Even when it sucks. So this one sucks. But I'm going to make sure I do it right even if it sucks. I listen to a lot of Tony Robbins and uh, he says, so what if it's hard, do it hard. Do it hard. And sometimes you just got to do it hard. This is definitely a hard one. I'm going to do it hard. I'm going to get it done. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps someone. Um, I talk a lot, but I think for someone that really doesn't know what they're signing up for, the more you talk, the more it sinks in exactly. Uh, how, what it truly entails because when you go fast and you're like yeah drop the subframe do this blah 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 you're quick it's kind of vague and then people really get started on projects that according to your little quick videos seemed like an easy project <laughs> and then they're like cussing up a storm saying this is a lot harder than his little short video made it seem it was so therefore, we'll drag on a long video to kind of drive the message home of this is not your easy job. If you sign up for it, know exactly what you're signing up for. Even if this was not rusty and all the bolts just dropped down, 
easy and go back up easy. I would say it's still a hard job. It's still a lot of labor. You gotta loosen the suspension, loosen the motor mounts, drop the exhaust, drop the subframe. And getting it, getting the subframe back up and aligned on jack stands isn't always the easiest thing to do. You, the bolts, you need to go up straight so they thread in nice and smooth, not crooked. It's hard to do that by yourself. You're gonna wanna have a buddy or two around to kind of help get that subframe back up in place and thread it in nice and straight so it's threading in smooth and you're not damaging the threads then once you got it threaded then you gotta also worry about the motor mount brackets themselves lining up with the subframe as the subframe's coming up so you're jiggling around the engine trying to get the engine to move a quarter of an inch that way a quarter of an inch this way so that those motor mount bolts will line up with the bolt holes on the subframe and uh some to do that i mean you're moving around a v6 with a transmission attached to it so now you're using a big pry bar and if you're not careful what you're prying against things could easily break and then now you need to replace stuff that wouldn't have needed to be replaced if you wouldn't have been prying around on the engine trying to get everything to line up so there's a lot of liability that the mechanic takes on um, and even having to drop the subframe. That's why you charge so much to have to drop it because customers will make you liable for old, brittle plastic. And, and like in Florida, we live in the Sunshine State and this plastic is so brittle. I mean, you lean against it the wrong way in someone's engine and it just breaks, it snaps because of all the heat under the engine the sunshine state stop and go traffic miles and miles and miles over a hundred thousand miles plus and plastic gets hardened up and it gets brittle and it's fine until you start messing around in that area and then once you start messing around in that area all of a sudden it's not fine and you move this and it put pressure against it and now you have a crack in this plastic piece that has to be special ordered and Trust me, I've been there, done all that. So if you could avoid all that, avoid it. Anyways, I'm rambling again, but just important ramble uh, to kind of, again, drive the message of how much liability, how serious of a job it can be. Make sure you know what you're signing up for. Anyways, I'm going to go. I'm tired. I, I want to get those lines loose and get that rack and pinion out before I go to bed. And then tomorrow we can tackle putting it all back together. But if I don't end this video, that's never going to happen. So I made it a long video on purpose because I wanted it to really drive the message. I think I've done that. I thank everyone that hung in there and watched it to the end. God bless you. I may or may not make a video of it going back together. If I do, it's just kind of like to cover my ass with the customer so they can say, well... We didn't see the new rack and pinion go in, you know, so that way they have documented proof on video, the new rack and pinion going in with all new lines. I might do a video of that. May, may or may not, just depends. I'm kind of running against the clock here because I have to go out of town this weekend and I'm trying to finish this before I go. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. I'm getting tired. Talk to you all in the next video. Peace out. Bye.